Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Nick from nickwilt.com and in today's video we're going to give you a quick demonstration on how to use Disco Diffusion. So Disco Diffusion is a set of code developed by these fine people right over here that allows you to run a text to image based image generator using artificial intelligence. So to give you a little bit of a, uh, an idea of what we're going to be doing, I have a couple different examples that I have shown on screen right over here. I've been doing this a lot in my free time lately and it's been quite enjoyable. As you can see, we have a whole bunch of very interesting and bizarre uh, pictures that this AI has been able to spit out. And I wanted to give you all a quick little tutorial on how you can do this for yourself. So it's completely free, 100%, as long as you have a Google Drive account. And once you have that, you can click and log on to discodiffusion.com, which I'll put in the video description, and it'll bring you up to a page that looks like this, which is a Google Colab notebook. So Google Colab, for those of you who are unfamiliar, is basically a program offered by Google that allows you to run other people's code, and it lets you do that on their own cloud computing servers. Because applications such as this that deal with artificial intelligence image generation tend to be very GPU intensive, and therefore you're offloading some of that work to Google's cloud servers. So in order to get started, the first thing you're going to need to do once you get to this page right here is you're going to want to click on File and then Save a Copy in Drive. And what that will do is it'll save a copy of this Google Colab Notebook to your own Google Drive, so that way you can feel free to modify it, edit it as much as you wish, add your own code in there, and all that good stuff. So once we do that, I have mine right over here. This is my own copy of Disco Diffusion. And if you have a hard time finding it, on your main Google Drive, it'll come up with a folder that says Colab Notebooks. And as you can see right here, copy of Disco Diffusion. So with mine right here, as you can see as I scroll down, I have a couple different prompts right here that have a green check mark on it. Essentially, the way that it works is there's a couple different setup requirements right here, and there's these little play buttons. All you need to do is click that play button. It'll run and set up all of the code that needs to be set up, and then this green little check mark right here will notify you that you're all ready to go. So there's a couple different one of these that I want to go over. So I want to go over box number two that says diffusion and clip model settings. This essentially lets you pick the different diffusion model that you want to use to generate your images. Uh, we're going to stick to the basic 512 by 512 diffusion model, but if you feel like using something like a portrait generator, or if you feel like generating pixel art, maybe even watercolors, or even pulp science fiction novel covers, you can do that as well. But for the most part, I'm going to stick with using the basic model. And then as I scroll down more, as you can see here under the settings tab, this is going to be probably the more important one that you'd like to use. And there's a whole bunch of different settings that you can uh, edit and tweak right here. I'm not going to go over many of those right now, but I'm going to give you a great resource for using that. This right here is Zippy's Disco Diffusion Cheat Sheet, which I'll also provide a link to in the video description. It helped me a lot with uh, figuring out how to work with this, and I still go back and reference it in order to find out different ways to get Disco Diffusion to work. So it's a very wonderful resource resource. I'll put that in the description. If we have any more questions, feel free to reference that. And with our basic settings over here, I'm going to keep the batch name as default. I'm going to keep our steps to 250, and I'm going to keep my dimensions set to right over here. I'm not really going to change anything else. Uh, I made sure that our animation settings and our extra settings have all been run as well, even though we're not going to really create a video, we're only going to stick to images. Now the most important one right here, the prompts, is going to be the text that you tell it to make a picture by. So I have uh, one that I made right here earlier, which was of a glass room overlooking an underwater city with moody lighting. And now's a good time to discuss prompts. So I'm going to use this prompt for our little demonstration right here. A beautiful painting of a flying steampunk pirate ship surrounded by multicolored clouds and birds with bright colors using Unreal Engine by Min Gwen and trending on ArtStation. So the best part about prompts is it takes a little bit of time to figure out which ones are going to give you the best results. Uh, what I like to give as advice is I'd like to say start off with an incredibly detailed description of the thing that you want to you want it to create. Uh, give it a different color uh, tell it the colors that you would like and the best part in my opinion that's one of the more interesting things that it can do is if you put in an artist's name such as Min Gwen Guan I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that right uh, that'll essentially tell Disco Diffusion to create the image in that particular art style 
So I'm going to copy all of this and we're going to go back to our main model. And then in here, we're going to get rid of my old prompt. And we're going to paste that one in and then I'm gonna click the play button to rerun. So that way the green check mark is there. So now it knows to use the updated prompt. And now the main one that we wanna focus on is going to be this diffuse tab. So on the do the run, it says display rate 20, which essentially means that every 20 frames, it's going to give you a little bit of an update on what the picture looks like. And then there's this one for a number of batches. I currently have it set to generate five images, but since we're going to just be doing a demonstration here, I'm gonna set that to generate only one image. And then I'm gonna click the play button over here, and then it will begin generating our image. So it has to run through all of this code right here. So I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom and then eventually it should show our progress meter and it'll even show a little bit of a preview of what the final image is going to look like. And so now that preview is finally showed up. And as you can see here, we've started with basically just a blank sheet of noise. And that is the way that uh, Disco Diffusion works. Uh, pretty much what it does is it starts you out with a uh, sheet of noise, and then it will slowly but surely clean it up into an image that resembles the text prompt that you inputted. So as you can see here, we've got a little bit of time to wait, probably about 16 minutes. So I'm going to sit back, relax, wait for it to generate, and then I will come back and we will see what we have. All right, and it looks like everything is finished up right now, and so this is the final result. So as you can see, let's just open the image in a brand new tab. I'll get out of here and let's compare it to our original prompt. So our original prompt of a flying steampunk pirate ship by Multicolored Clouds and Birds seems to have come out pretty all right. As you can see, we have a pirate ship and a couple different birds over here. So the thing with Disco Diffusion is sometimes it kind of takes creative liberties with some of the prompts that you give it. As you can see, we've got like the little beak of a bird over here in the corner and the clouds are kind of shaped in the comb of a rooster and the multicolored clouds are kind of in basically the form of feathers. But that kind of makes it unique and very interesting. And I myself have gotten quite a few interesting pictures using just this prompt alone. And that essentially covers all of how to use Disco Diffusion. Uh, one more thing that I'd like to show you is if we go back to Google Drive, uh, it actually saves all of your images to Google Drive in these particular folders. So if you go to the AI folder, to Disco Diffusion and Images Out, uh, time to Disco was the name of the prompt that we've served. And so right over here would be our final image. You can download them, do whatever you want with them over there. And that essentially is Disco Diffusion. It's a very interesting, very fun piece of code that I highly recommend you take a look at and come up with some very interesting images for yourself. All of the, all of the relevant links to Disco Diffusion as well as Zippy's cheat sheet will be in the video description. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.